Hi everyone, my name is Greg Ellis and welcome to Redskin Review. This show is being taped on Tuesday, October 5th, and it's our seventh show of the 2010 season. And in this show, we will look back at the Reds, big, Redskins' big 43-17 win over Loveland in Week 6, and we'll look ahead at this week's game on the road against Milford. With me, as always, Dan Albers, Coach Jeff Geistein. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks. Coach, uh, your team uh, went up against uh, the first league foe of the year, right. and uh, you, I thought that on both sides of the ball, after a kind of a slow start, I thought both sides of the ball you played pretty well. Yeah, we were pretty happy. I mean, we always want to get that first league win, and, and um, you know, we weren't really sure what to expect from Loveland because they had taken no kills to overtime, mm -hmm. and they had beaten uh, Lebanon, but uh, then they, uh, you know, had, had lost some games, too, uh, that, uh, you know, by some scores we weren't really... We were a little surprised at, so we weren't really sure what to expect, and I, it took us a little bit offensively to get going. Um, and Coach Cook thought it might. Um, Loveland usually has a pretty good scheme for us, and we got, our guys got it figured out, and and uh, they made some good adjustments. We were able to move the ball then pretty effectively after, after about the first half of the first quarter. And defensively, we did. I thought we did a pretty nice job uh, uh, against the run, especially. I think they had like 30 yards the whole game mm -hmm. running the ball. So we're. Um, you know, anytime you do that, you're, you can put yourself in a good chance to win. Yeah, Nick Mason had another solid game, and it seems like each week he seems to get the confidence just seems to be ruined for Nick. Yeah, he's doing a good job. He's, you know, for the most part taking care of the football. He's still dropping too many snaps mm -hmm. for some reason. I don't know why that's happening. But, uh, you know, he, th he throws a good ball, and we had some guys really step up at receiver. Uh, Reed Kaiser had a real nice game, and, and Ryan Austinbeck and, and Kyle Payne played a little receiver. So it's... You know, we knew some guys had to step up with Jordan being out, and uh, you know they all they all did that. I, I talked for a very little little bit with Coach Stanyard and said, you know, hey, your offense line seems like they're doing a good job, and he felt like they were getting a little bit more physical. And just talk, we don't really always talk about the offensive line too much. We don't really say their name. Talk a little bit about them, and then also the job that Coach Stanyard's done this year. Well, Matt's always done a great job. I mean, he's he's been blessed the last few years with some outstanding linemen with Norwell and Manns and Hetrick and. Kevin Becker playing tight end and so forth, but and this year's a, a young group, younger group, inexperienced group, and he's done a great job of being patient with them, and for the most part, and, uh, <laughs> bringing them along, and, they, and they've really stepped up. Uh, you know, um, Nathaniel Brown and and uh, Matt Roising and um, Wayne Hartman, the seniors, and Ronnie Giver, who's our only returning starter, and then we've got a sophomore playing now uh, since Alex Black's injury, um, Reinhardt and. Uh, you know he's doing a nice job, and, and he's get and they are getting more physical as the as the uh, you know season goes on, which has kind of been a trademark for off, our offensive lines for the last few years. Is you know when we're zone blocking and they're combo blocking and they're coming off trying to knock a down man into the linebackers, and and, and they're starting to get that a little bit better and, and understanding how much effort and it really does take to uh, you know accomplish what we want to, and we and our running game has benefited from that. Yeah, Jordan Shelton obviously was out with, with an injury, and it seems like every time you have someone that goes down, you have someone that picks it up, and Ryan Asabek, I think, caught a nice pass, and he yeah. played very well for you. He also threw a nice pass, Yeah, too. he did. Yeah, well, we talked about that before the game. Somebody's going to step up, and somebody's going to make plays. Reed made a great catch. Reed Kaiser did um, on touchdown. Uh, Nick threw the ball up high where only Reed could get it, and he went up and got it, and then Ryan, like you said, threw a nice pass uh, on the uh, double pass, and also... Uh, Caught a nice pass, uh, you know. So, you know, that's what we need to keep having because injuries are going to be part of the game and we need to have somebody that's going to step in and, and uh, keep our level of play where we want it to be. Loveland uh, got on the board first. They put a pretty nice drive together, went down there, and, and your defense held them to a field goal attempt, and, and they did get the field goal to go up three to nothing. But I thought after that, I thought the, the defense, uh, you really had them out of, out of sync, so to speak. Yeah, we did. We, yeah, they hit that long pass on us, and, and they, you know, they made a nice throw and catch on it. And and um, fortunately, we were able to hold them to a field goal on that. And and uh, you know, and then their other one, we kind of blew a coverage, and they hit another long pass for a touchdown on us. But you take those two plays away, that's half their passing right. yards. So, you know, really, two plays really accounted for. Um, probably 40% of their yardage all night, and uh, so otherwise defensively, we thought we played pretty well. Got got them off the field, so our offense could get on the field. You know, we scored on defense to open up the second half. So there were a lot of good positive things that happened for us defensively. After that field goal, um, you put Kyle Payne back there to return a kickoff 
for the first time this year, I believe. I don't remember seeing him yeah, back there before. Yeah, I don't think before. he's been back there before. And what's he do? He takes it 96 yards for a score. Yeah. That was a big lift. <laughs> oh, it was huge. We needed that. It was a big momentum uh, changing play for us, and Kyle's capable of that. And he had another one later on when he intercepted the pass and ran it back. And uh, he just had a phenomenal game. But, you know, we put him back there, and he was, and he ran, he ran it up in there, and then, and, you know, the waters kind of parted a little bit, and he <laughs> saw the opening and took off. And, and uh, you know, really did a nice job, made a couple nice cuts in there. And, and like I said, that was a huge momentum thing for us. Your DBs, uh, as you said, you, you kind of held them, held their r rushing yardage, and they threw the ball more than I think we probably anticipated. Yeah. But you, you got three interceptions. It was Shingleton, Payne, and uh, um, Vale. Vale. Brian Vale. Brian Vale, right. Yeah, it was, um, you know, they did throw it more than we thought they probably would. I think primarily they wanted to be a running team, but we did such a good job with that early. He kind of abandoned that and threw it. And we were a little surprised he didn't play the sophomore quarterback a little more, who's the mm -hmm. best thrower. Um, but he played, you know, a couple different quarterbacks and and uh, tried to mix it up a little bit. But we did a nice job. Chris got that uh, interception in the first quarter, and then uh, Kyle got his, and, and I think Brian's was a little bit later. Um, so anytime you get three turnovers, uh, hopefully you're going to win the ball game. And I think we might have only had one turnover. We fumbled that kickoff. Um, you know, so we were plus two in the turnovers, uh, which is always a good thing. And, and, you know, our DBs have done a good job all year of really ball hawking and going after the football when it's in the air. And Coach Bruns has done a nice job, and Coach Newton, of uh, preparing them for that. <clears throat> Matt White played another really good game. Seemed like we were calling his name every other play. Yeah. But with him and Jeff Sakurl, we've really done a good job of anchoring the defensive line. They have our two defensive ends. Matt's a senior, and he's, he's a strong, physical kid. Matt's one of our faster kids, and when he's on a movement, he's he's definitely uh, disruptive. And and you know when he gets his hands on you, he usually takes you down. He's a strong kid, and, and Jesse's a big, tall, rangy junior that's that's really starting to figure it out now and playing better each week. Uh, he's becoming more aggressive. He's able to get off blocks better, um, and he's you know we're we're looking for him to just to continue to improve. I think one of the only things that that I'm noticing that you have to be a little bit disappointed in, I guess maybe, is the the penalties that you guys have had. It, yeah. How do you explain when you you go in a Glenville game where you have very few, <laughs> you go then to this game and you have more? Is it? I well, mean, well, how do you explain it, some of it? Some of it, kids were playing you know in place of Jordan, uh, mm -hmm. Shelton. And, uh, you know, offensively we did. Uh, I don't know, it was a lack of concentration early in the game. We, we did have some bad penalties. Um, you know, they called one penalty on us, um, a clip on Reed, and that was, that was a close call. Right. Um, you know, that was a hustle play by him, so, you know, I can't really hold that against him. But the concentration ones of not getting able to line up mm -hmm. right and the receivers not being where they need to be, um, you know, or jumping off sides, those kind of things. Uh, yeah, we got We definitely have to clean that up. That's obviously correctable mistakes. I mean, well, you'd hope so. Yeah. You'd hope so. I think concentration plays a big part in that, and sometimes the tempo. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if guys can get in a nice rhythm and things like that, they you know they go get lined up, they run the play, they get ready for the next play, and so forth. Uh, things keep rolling for them, and things are kind of broken up and cut apart. Then sometimes it's a little more difficult. You, know, you hate to be redundant on this, but uh, Jake Nelson, again, <laughs> had another big game. I think he had 180-something yards rushing and a couple touchdowns. Yeah, well, Jake's always going to be solid for us. He's, uh, you know, had a, broke off a, uh, one long run in there, and, but, he's, but as the game went on, he got better and better, and I think that's his testament to his conditioning and, and uh, him being patient. He's a patient runner, and he kind of lets the offensive line do their thing and then sees what's going on, makes his cuts, and presses the line of scrimmage when he's supposed to, and and, uh, you know, he's, he's uh, been just on a roll lately with those 100-yard games. Yeah. It seemed like you also got uh, Tanner Braunhaber in there a little bit more in the action. Is that because of what happened with Jordan Shelton maybe being down, or are you trying to get him more involved well, in the offense? we had to play Tanner a little more for running the ball and things just, to, you know, to get him involved. But also we had Louis Lemberg, who had to play all receiver. Mm -hmm. um, and normally he plays sometimes a little bit of our F.A. position. So, you know, Tanner did a good job running mm -hmm. the football and uh, – um, you know, he's going to get better as he gets more reps and, and you know, as the year goes on. Players of the game, offense, defense, special teams? Offensively is Reed Kaiser. He, Reed, uh, playing tight end for us, is, is improving each week. He's becoming a better blocker, and he had a really nice catch where he went up over the top of the Loveland kid and got it. And, uh, you know, it was really good because his hands were here and the Loveland kids were just right below him. And uh, that was good concentration. It was a great catch. You know, and then... Defensively, Jesse Carell, like I said, he's getting better each week. He's becoming more comfortable and, 
and uh, more physical. And, uh, you know, he's going to be a, a really nice player for us. And then special teams was Kyle Payne. When he returned that kickoff, it got mm -hmm. us all the momentum back. And then, uh, you know, he opens up the second half with just a huge, you know, hit on the uh, kickoff where he went down and uh, uh, broke through an opening and just took the ball carry right to the ground. And then, the, and then their first play from scrimmage, the second half, he picks it off and, and runs it back for a touchdown. So he was very disruptive all mm -hmm. night um, on defense. But, but the special teams plays of that tackle and, uh, you know, running that kickoff back were just huge for us. Absolutely. Okay, what what did the uh, JV and freshman teams do this week? JV lost sixteen to nothing. Loveland's got a nice young group, and uh, you know we, we're still battling some injuries at that lower level. And the freshmen lost um, thirty nine to thirteen. So Loveland's got some good couple good classes coming up. That sophomore freshman and sophomore classes. Okay. Now you, you talked about Jordan Shelton. Um, is he going to be back? And what other injuries do you have to? To, to factor in for this week? Jordan's still iffy. Um, he's getting a lot better. I'm not sure if he's going to make it by Friday or not. We'll know more probably tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, when they evaluate him again. Uh, Tommy Crook had a burst of sack in his knee. His knee kind of swelled up, but it's, it's getting better, and I think if it's still an issue, they'll just drain it. But, uh, you know, he's, he's going to play. I don't see why he wouldn't play. And Chris Singleton's ribs are still bothering him, but he's got a flak jacket and you know he practiced today, so he'll he'll play as well. Um, you know, and then we got a couple other kids um, dinged up a little bit, um, but um, you know nobody that was we didn't lose anybody for the rest of the season or anything like that. I saw Cody Schmidt was back in there. Yeah, after. Cody's fine. Yeah. He's he's back, and uh, Trevor Green's back now. He he broke his collarbone in preseason, and he's back with us. So. You know, um, Phil Arlinghouse is back. He was back last week, so, you know, another DB. So we're getting some of our guys back. Okay.